Hey, everybody. Welcome to another This Week in Nano, where we get to hang out with some guys from the Nano Core team and Brian from the Nano Center and learn a little bit about what's going on in the Nano community and uh, what we're all working towards. Today, we've got Micah, Brian, Troy, and Roy. If you guys could introduce yourselves and uh, tell us what you do, that would be awesome. Hi, I'm Micah. I uh, handle all of Nano's public infrastructure as far as hosting, uh, keeping our services online, APIs, things like that. And uh, hi. Hey, I'm Brian um, from the Nano Center, just helping out there. Hi, I'm Troy. Uh, I do public relations for the Nano Foundation. Good to be here with everybody. Hi, I'm Roy. I do software development for Nano. All right. So uh, what's up, guys? How you doing? Well, we've been working the last couple of weeks after the version 16 release, uh, trying to get, you know, we had some issues there with syncing. So uh, Roy and the team has been working around the clock to try and get a uh, version 16.1 out to kind of uh, fix those issues. So I think Roy, I don't know, you want to give a little update where we are? Uh, sure. Yeah, we hoped to get 16.1 out on Monday, uh, but we found some last minute problems with bootstrapping until we, we fixed that and we got the release candidate out for it on Wednesday and tested it on the beta network and the live network. Got a bunch of feedback and based on that, we're going to release the release candidate the final release uh, that's already been tagged and the Docker image has been built and we're just I'm collecting build artifacts to do the announcement, which I'm sure Troy will have done by the time this video is aired. I hope so. Uh, <laughs> it fixes synchronization issue. Just, um, we had problems where UDP packets were getting dropped by the OS buffer because we weren't servicing that socket often enough to pull them out of the buffer. Uh, so we just, we weren't able to, we were hoping to find what was causing that. Uh, but we weren't able to do that, so we just wrote a separate thread that always EQs things from the OS buffer as fast as possible into an application buffer. And that helps things stay in sync. So we will, uh, we haven't noticed any problems that we've gotten good reports from that. And we're still working on the underlying calls, and that should be fixed in the next release as well, based on what we do now. So the the one thing that's interesting is that we've had these uh, kind of thing, the, the hangups with bootstrapping probably since the beginning of the year when you hit this certain um, amount of blocks. So that, I, I believe you told me that a lot of that will be cleared up here. Yeah, this fixes some of the issues with bootstrapping getting hung during forks. Um, there was a thread mutex deadlock that was happening. So we, found that and corrected it. So now that no longer happens, but still not, still not all the way to the point where there's no hangups for anyone, uh, but it'll be much more diffuse. Sweet. What do we have to look forward to next after uh, we finally get our vote by hash feature enabled? What are you guys working towards? Uh, the next thing that's going to be in the next release, which is version 17, is uh, lazy bootstrapping, which will once and for all solve the bootstrapping problem. And so as soon as you turn on the node, your accounts will become usable probably within a few minutes or less. And as blocks are generated on the network, then you know, those are being confirmed. They'll, they'll be added to your ledgers. Nothing needs to be done. So it's just going to be passively adding confirmed blocks and their uh, predecessors as well as their um, Senders to the ledger because the received block was accepted, then the sender must have also been accepted. So it's just going to be building up that tree passively as much as possible. And um, basically, the nodes is going to become usable off map pretty much instantly. Yeah, I think everybody's going to be pretty excited when the bootstrapping stuff is finally done because I feel like since I've kind of been involved in the project, it's kind of just always been there hanging as an issue we needed to get fixed. So um, I know it's been frustrating for a lot of people, so this will be really nice for for us to move past it. Yeah, and when's the uh, tentative release date for 17? Uh, we've pushed it back two weeks now to October 5th. Um, so it's the release date we have in mind right now. And then the next release after that, October, uh, or version 18, we're, we're spread a longer amount of time on. Um, 
out for. Um, we're going to do a lot of cleanup in that release. So if any, uh, if the schedule for 17 does slip, yeah. it'll be eating into that time. It, it's a race now to see whether 16 is out. 16 one's out before this YouTube video. So we'll see. <laughs> it's going to be close. So we do have Micah finished his first month as a full-time member of the nano team. Now he's also been working on this project for which I'm sure in his mind feels like forever, but how's it been going, bud? It's been going pretty good. It's uh, exciting as always. There's always something to fix, always something to, uh, to add. <laughs> so I definitely been busy, been doing a whole lot. I can see myself, Roy. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> no, nobody else can see Roy though, so that's going to be really. No, good. no, yeah, Roy. Roy is being uh, pedantic here, visually pedantic, since we can never hear him. <laughs> for this, for this that are here, every one of these shows is starts thirty minutes late because we have to figure out Roy's microphone. Uh, I don't know how much confidence that gives me, you know, in that he's a software developer, but uh, here we are. He's our yeah, I plug the microphone in the exact same way every time. It's so what kind of stuff have you been working on this month, Micah? Uh, I've been working on some kind of low level stuff, not a whole lot of outward facing things, but uh, we've been working on documenting the protocol better. Uh, so actually having like clean style of documents that anyone can look at and go down to the very protocol level because we've got some documentation out already for uh, for how to talk to the node uh, but what we don't really have uh, and that I've been kind of building as I've been learning this because I've been implementing a few different things is how to work with the protocol itself so when you see you know you want to talk to a nano node or any peer on the network how do you talk to them how do you establish a connection how do you you know read the votes how, how do all these things work together uh, so that's been kind of one of my projects in getting that all documented and it's gonna take a little while yet because we're making changes uh, still I'm working with uh, the gentleman who did most of the Wireshark filters uh, and working with him and getting Wireshark updated for a new uh, vote by hash feature which is awesome uh, that saves a ton of bandwidth once everybody's using it um, so it, it's just been kind of a lot of foundation laying this month so far and, and getting ready to uh, push out some new features. Yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited about the documentation and, you know, we have the, you know, an updated white paper in the works, uh, kind of like an explain it like I'm five white paper in the works, We've got the new website coming. It's almost going to feel like we're rebranding again, like how much, yes. you know, kind of like we're launching everything that should have been launched with a rebrand will be launched here. So um, the new website's going to be awesome. Yeah. I'm excited about it. It's going to be very community centric. Uh, all of our resources, all of our information, everything is going to be in there as well as having a big social component, being able to yeah. kind of interact with, with exchanges, with the public in general. Uh, it's going to be more of an experience and less of a, oh, here's some information. Yeah, because right now there's just not a whole lot of reason, uh, you know, to go to the website, you can, you can check some stuff out, but there's not a reason to really stay there. And like, we want you to actually be able to stay and interact. And um, so I'm, I'm very excited about it. And a lot of, we got a lot of stuff that we're coming and yeah, it, it really does feel like another rebrand to me without changing the name. We're not changing the name again. Promise. I, I thought that uh, Colin really regretted switching from Ray Blox, and that's what I heard. Just wants to go back to Ray. Just, yeah. Just, Could you imagine? <laughs> um, Michael, what's uh, getting you like the most pumped up about being full time with Nano? Um, man. You can just hang in your sweet new house. Yeah, man. Right. I'm, I'm in my abode. No, this is it, it's great. The, the freedom working with the team is is just fantastic, and I and I had a really like my previous job was very flexible. This, this is fantastic because um, we're in all kinds of different time zones. We're working all kinds of different times and we're working all the time. Uh, but there's, there's balance and it, it's, it's just been a really, really great experience. You know, we have our, our weekly team meetings and then we just go off and we get our jobs done. We get, we, uh, we build, we test, we talk about it. And the dev channel is always, I don't know if any of the developers 
like core developers actually sleep because I, I wake up and there's like another 500 messages in there. So yeah, they've been busy, <laughs> but it, it's just been really good to be able to sit down and focus on anything that the nano uh, infrastructure, any of the network, anything that we need and just take care of it. So I've been enjoying that. Yeah, the time zones are interesting. It feels like people are working probably out of 24 hours, probably like 19 or 20. It feels like there's activity going on in there. And, mm. uh, I'll wake up and everyone in London has already been working since like two in the morning my time. You'll just have to catch up on everything. It's, it's pretty interesting. It's fun. Uh, Roy, do you ever sleep? I try not to. <laughs> just coffee. Just coffee nonstop. Coffee. <laughs> um, Brian, you want to tell us a little bit about the Nano Center? Uh, what are your main projects right now? Any opportunities for the community? Um, so I just got back from Europe. Uh, it looks like they've been moving on without me, which is great. Uh, James Coxon uh, has been doing uh, his steady med scientist work while I've been gone. I saw his, uh, they have a closed alpha right now in the Nano SMS project. Um, you know, still very beginning stages, but it's just so exciting, really, what it could be and what it could bring to the world, really. Um, but more ex the new one that he's doing is a Nano Quake 2 project where he's, he's integrating Nano basically so that you can go in there, play games with your friends, and get Nano rewards for getting kills or get Nano rewards for winning their match and everything like that. I don't understand how it works all the way. I won't pretend to, but... Uh, it's really cool. I think it's fun. Um, I'd love to get people involved in it once it's uh, more smoothed out and play. Yeah, you got to come play. Uh, I, I don't really understand it either, seeing as how I got two kills and crashed the server on both of them. Yeah. <laughs> so it's your opportunity to go in there and watch Troy jump up and down in a corner and not know what he's doing. <laughs> Spinning in a circle. No, no, this was one time off off the video or, you know, a Troy called uh, James Cox and a mad scientist. I think I don't think that made the recording. And I feel like that really needs to be on there because he just has the craziest ideas and then he goes and gets them done, which is awesome. Yeah, yeah he's crazy, man. He really is a mad scientist in the best way possible. He's obviously a super smart guy, but I mean, he, he just thinks of things that um, I don't think most other people would. His brain just goes to other places. So it's really cool. Uh, we still have that video series. Uh, project going. Um, we're hoping to see some more submissions. It ends uh, October 5th, so mm. I encourage everyone to submit a uh, video. You know, mm. We're, we're uh, excited to see those entries. Um, you I, mentioned Nano SMS and how you really think it could change the world. I was just wondering if you give us like an example of, of how that's going to work for anybody who isn't familiar with that project. So like the basic idea is that um, you know one of the problems in the world right now is there's just a huge population of people uh, that are unbanked. They don't have access to banks where they can safely store their funds. Um, you know, you think a lot of third world countries, you think of South America, uh, Africa, Asia, just all over the place. Um, and this program would basically allow people to send and receive nano um, via text message. Um, basic phones are pretty accessible to people even in some of the um, poor countries in the world. So um, this would be a safe way for them to do it. Um, it also, of course, uh, be an avenue of use for Nano. So, um, you know, like I said, very beginning stages. Um, and it's pretty tech heavy for a guy like me that's uh, not tech savvy. But uh, I think it's exciting what it could be. So we just kind of have to wait and see. Sweet. Troy, you're getting ready to don't, jump in and say something. Don't hate yourself for not being tech savvy, Brian. They still need us. Oh, I know they do, Troy. We're needed. I, when I was a kid, I was building computers and I was doing things like that. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm a computer guy. Somebody. I'm yeah. around all these, these geeks in here. I'm just like, holy shit. Like, I am not. And yeah. Yeah. It feels <laughs> really good, though, when you can help them with something that they couldn't do. It feels real good. Well, one day we're going to help Roy with his mic. One day, yeah, that's it. I'm gonna fly down to New Orleans and get set, get you set up with a microphone, Roy. You can always come down, but uh, it was working this morning. You uh, highlighted Bruno from Brazil this week. Uh, you yeah, tell us more about that. Yeah, and we're looking to um, do some spotlight 
sorry, spotlights on uh, some more community managers just because they're like the unheralded uh, backbones of Nano. Um, you know, Bruno, for example, has a, him and his uh, team have like 15,000 people in their community, which is just insane. I mean, our, our Discord, our main Discord, I think has like 25 or 30,000 people in it. So 15,000 people just in Brazil is just insane. Um, he's done great work uh, as far as, you know, getting them all information and helping them. He's a developer, a programmer. Um, he attended conferences in the beginning of the year to kind of rep Nano. Um, I know there was a Nano Center uh, kind of drive to get him sent to another conference down in Brazil. Uh, so hopefully we can get that funded. It will get funded. Um, but yeah, Bruno's just been doing great work and uh, we really, really appreciate these guys. We have guys all over the place and girls, uh, you know, all through Europe, South America, uh, Asia. It's just, uh, it's cool to see the project grow and see these communities uh, develop. Speaking of community members contributing, uh, another thing that I've noticed is a bigger social media presence with some cool graphics. Uh, what's up with that? Yeah, we have a, 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 a sorry, designer in the community has been doing our uh, Instagram uh, graphics and, and for Twitter. Uh, so that's been fun. Uh, just been trying to get, you know, more of a presence. And, you know, the biggest key is that you want to show the project is, is active and alive and that we're, you know, people don't sit there in the GitHub all day and, and GitHub all day, not the GitHub, in GitHub all day and, uh, you know, look at what code's been pushed. Uh, they want to see, you know, activity going on everywhere. So that's what we're trying to do and just kind of get the name out there and get people uh, excited about Nano. Plus, if you're, on the, yeah. plus if you're on the GitHub all day, you're going to be bored because um, I'm usually working. So I'm going to actually merge some things in. <laughs> yeah. You want to actually see what's going on? I'm going to get on there. I'm going to get in the GitHub. Okay. You know what you guys should do? You should get some. Uh, some cameras so we can just watch the, the developers working behind their computer. The Roy cam. Back in January. It's like a panda cam. Back in January, I think James Coxon did that when we had a note issue. I think he basically cloned his or, or was was streaming his uh, workstation so you could see the fix. That might have been me. In. Was it you? It might have been. I was yeah. helping with an issue back in January and streaming my terminal. Yeah, yeah, we were yeah. we were watching the wizard work. Yeah, that was that was really fun. Uh, I didn't understand any of it. And, uh, <laughs> it was just like, okay, good, good, yeah. getting it's getting fixed. But that was it was definitely neat to see. Uh, oh yeah, um, the uh, CEO of Binance. What's his name? Uh, CZ. CZ of Binance said uh, October through December. That's uh, going to be big for crypto. What do you guys think? We'll see. Uh, I think CZ's been saying several months are going to be big for crypto. So we'll, uh, we'll see if he's right. Uh, I would like him to be right here eventually. Um, yeah. Well, regardless so. of price, you look at volume. Uh, these months have been huge for crypto. Uh, I, I think people forget that. Uh, yeah. If the price isn't going up, that doesn't mean people aren't interested in it. Uh, it's it's still, it's still a high interest. Yeah, it's gonna be nice to see this when the market picks up a little bit. You know, don't want to talk about the price too much, but it's been nice. You know, Nano's had the volume pick up, trading volume pick up, which has been cool to see. Good to see. Um, so we'll see. You know, hopefully this market can turn around and uh, we can get more people involved. And I'm, you know, I'm back from Europe now, so I think it's uh, definitely possible. Uh, yeah. Probably even. But uh, in all seriousness, piggybacking on what Troy is saying, I think I don't know as far as the Nano Center, what. Um, I'm trying to do and what we're trying to do is while the market's down you know trying to lay that foundation of community involvement and really getting everything set um and ready to launch for you know when the market does rebound i think there's going to be a compounding effect uh, if you have everything ready uh and community members engaged and a plan set uh that can be put in motion so uh yeah we'll see i mean i'd love october for december for volume to pick up and sometimes you know what is it you know it's like cyclical it can uh maybe volume will pick up because people expect it to. So who knows? Yeah. I think what you just said is pretty much been our, what we, our goal the whole year is just lay that foundation. Uh, you know, we really came on, you know, the project came out and out of not really being known to all of a sudden being very big. And uh, we could then, you know, use this bear market to kind of catch up, 
develop, set the groundwork, build the community. I'll put this community against anyone in cryptocurrency. Um, so yeah, so I mean, we're just trying to lay that groundwork and be ready when the time comes. All right. Well, that was a fun little discussion about the things going on. Thanks for tuning in. Before we go, I thought it'd be fun to do something a little bit different. I'd ask a random question so you can get to know us better in some way that doesn't matter at all. Um, so uh, the question is, what's your Quake username going to be? I'll go first. Uh, well, actually, I'm going to go with what my username was when I played Team Fortress back in middle school, which was handheld tight. All right. Handheld tight? Yeah, like, um, like I don't know. I was you're holding on for dear life? <laughs> I I had something to do with holding hands, I think. I don't remember. Okay. Oh, yeah. oh, big, <laughs> big hand holder in middle school. Got it. <laughs> do your thing, Sean. Okay. Uh, mine's pretty simple. It's uh, Destroy R. So it's uh, Troy Retzer. So it's D-E-S-T-R-O-Y R. So it's Destroyer, but it basically is my name. Wow, that's, that's really hardcore. Very clever. Um, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> that was actually my Discord name when I first found Nano. Because, you know, Discord is used for video games. So I'm messaging Colin every night, Destroyer, being like, how can I help? What can I do? And I was like, I really need to change this. Um, hey, Micah, how about you? Uh, probably CS Specs. I was big on Counter-Strike back in the day, and I wore glasses. Uh, okay. So I get, yeah. I get it. That's good. And Roy? I don't really play any video games, but the username I use for everything else is Arkeen. <laughs> R-K-E, my, uh, the first initial of my first name and then my last name. So, <laughs> glad we came to you, Roy. That's very important. <laughs> oh, thank you for explaining that where the R came from. That was a headshot. Um, but this isn't about the video games you played in the past. This is what your Quake username is going to be. So we'll yeah, we need, we'll somebody, we need somebody to just be the, the death dummy here, Roy. We need somebody to just take all the bullets. <laughs> I got to get Nano somehow. Yeah, I don't know. I probably won't play Quake. <laughs> okay, fine. Good. Yeah, yeah. Good. Go program. All right, and we saved the best for last, Brian. I am not the best for last. I'm putting it on the spot. I don't know. I'll do, I'll go with uh, Mr. Me Seeks Nano because I like the character. It's I like the best it. episode. It, it it is, and I would do my impressions for you here, but save that treat. The for only us. purchase that I made at thirty dollars with Nano was I spent one Nano on a Me Seeks beanie. That's, and it's amazing. So it's amazing. I, One nano. So much with Troy right now. I don't know really. Get off the call. This is good. Oh, we'll have to we'll have to continue this afterwards. <laughs> All right. Well, again, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you guys next time. All right. Thank you.